Good evening, good evening, good evening. My name is Robert C. Ayala, and I'm a real Democrat running for the Democratic nomination for president to stop the campaigns of Joe Biden, Donald Trump, or any candidate telling us how to live, what to ingest, or how to look. I may be imperfect, but I know what I believe in. And a real Democrat believes in putting you and others first. I hope everybody had a good day. Hope everybody got to see the debate last night. Uh, as usual, uh, my wonderful stream has no waiting members and that's okay. I have already made some comments about the debate. Uh, I made some comments about Joe Biden this week. And what I really want to do is start talking about the future and what can we do and how do we do things to make things a little bit less costly for everybody. Not everybody in this country is rich. Uh, we don't, not everybody has the money to spend on their groceries and their medicine. We just have to talk about some of the things that we're doing that is making folks raise the prices on all of us. One of the things I think that's important that's coming about is that we have a reemergence of mask mandates. And I'm only gonna spend a couple moments on this because I don't know if Democrats are purposely trying to lose the election, but when you do things that restrict people's freedom in the middle of a primary race for the office of the president, you just focus all the cannons on us. And I've said what I said about COVID. People are going to do what they want to do with it. Mandating and penalizing people. Don't you get tired of that? Don't you always get tired of if, if you don't obey, there's a fine, there's some penalty. Who gave anybody the right to judge you or me? If you, if you want to go swimming in the Hudson River and you want to get... Uh, whatever the diseases are by swimming in the bad part of the Hudson, right? That's your right. That's your obligation, right? You get to do that. You get to do what's good for you. So if some people want to put on a mask, I don't see the problem. Put on your mask. If some people don't want to put on the mask, I don't see the problem. Don't put on the mask. But this whole idea of people in various parts of government constantly and continuously taking their fingers and poking you in the eye and telling you what to do and how you should do it and when you should do it and when you're doing it, how much they want of your money to do it. It never comes without conditions. And so if we just step back for a moment as a country and we look at that debate last night Every single one of those candidates was just figuring out a way on how they can make your life miserable. Doesn't matter what policy they were trying to push or which way they were trying to make it go. They were telling you basically, they know how you should live your life and they're going to try to control your life. And everybody sat in that audience and cheered them on. And again, when I see what I saw last night, I see eight candidates that have a vigor. <clears throat> Some of them look youthfulness. They're ready to clash, they're ready to fight. And then I look at our candidate and he has none of that. So Democrats need to cut this crap. Whoever's pushing the mask mandate on the Democratic side, there will not be another election in the basement of people's homes. People are going to come out and vote this time. I, I don't know whoever's pulling those puppet strings, but maybe you should uh, 
run back and run your numbers again. You're flawed. Your math is completely flawed. So, off with the mask mandate, let's talk about food. And I know the New York Post is probably a little bit, a little bit biased, but it's reality is the New York Post uh, is in the state that I live in. So, and it's a newspaper that you can buy everywhere. So it doesn't seem like it would be any less of a news source than anything else out there. And it says, Biden's food stamp expansion linked to a 15% jump in grocery prices. Now that may be true, who knows? But what I thought was interesting about it isn't so much that statement was this. President Biden's Department of Agriculture rolled out revised nutritional standards for federal food benefits. Now, I don't know how a uh, food standard um, requires uh, more money for you to buy more food. I thought a food standard would be maybe you should some way make them buy healthy food I don't know but in this case the food standard apparently means that the program expanded by roughly 25 percent from pre-covid levels folks think about that pre-covid levels and so the rest of the article really doesn't matter because it's like drugs and Medicare as soon as all the drug manufacturers knew that the federal government would pay for prescription drugs through Medicare, then instantly every year the cost of the medicine increased. And so if you take a larger population of people and you give them more food stamps, they actually are going to buy less food because the market's going to react to the influx of over capacity and it's going to increase inflation like we have. I mean, you know what why eggs were five dollars is one thing but they haven't really gone back to where they should be at a dollar a dozen and that's really where they should be gas hasn't really gone between 250 and three dollars it's still hovering between four and five so when we look at what we want and who we want going forward what we need to ask ourselves is where does this money come from where does the expanded food stamps come from most Democrats are two income households in reality when there's an increase in food stamps the net tax ramification of that hits the middle class so if you raise the standard deduction to $26,000 then effectively what you're doing is taking more of your hard-earned money and putting it back in your pocket. And we need to do that because there's a 15% price in food uh, prices, but what about uh, the 15% price increase across every single thing else? You can't even buy a t-shirt at Walmart today for really under $8. And if you do, you'll be back in the store next week buying another t-shirt for $8. So I am one of these people that I'm not really sure I want to cut off all trade with China, but what I think would be good in the foreign policy realm with China and with the rest of the world is that as a condition of working with America, they start moving to a world where their people are free. My platform continues to be about freedom, freedom to choose, freedom to live, Freedom to decide what's good for you and freedom to do it without all the naysayers around you making you feel like crap because you made a choice one way or another. My name is Robert C. Ayala, a real Democrat, and a real Democrat is someone who puts you and others first. Thank you. Uh, please stop by next Tuesday at 9.30, uh, the following Thursday at 9.30. Um, I have some folks over at iHeartMedia uh, that I'm talking to, so hopefully as we progress forward, uh, we can really start to get other people um, that are sane people. Because I, I just don't think Robert F. Kennedy, um, somebody who clearly had a problem with some uh, controlled substances for a good portion of his life, um, isn't really 
the, the Democratic candidate to take on Joe Biden. Now, I don't think it's going to take a lot of people to take on Joe Biden, but I think it's going to take a lot of people to come to the ideas of what's good going forward. You know, we don't need to talk about going up and locking people up or all this stuff, but we need to talk about the new economic plan going forward. What does marijuana legislation really look for the country as a whole? What groups get locked in? What groups get locked out? What about transportation? <clears throat> We've got planes and automobiles and trucks, uh, and we've got a grid that is deficient in actually supporting any of it. So how can we turn what America needs and educate the next generation of Americans who are going to build what America needs? And together, we can, as a country, red and blue, move forward as one. I mean, we might not always agree on everything, and we're probably going to be divided uh, for the rest of the time. But if we stay together on economic principles that move the country forward and help everyone prosper at the same time, and we don't even need to talk about the billionaires, they're always going to prosper. They prospered during COVID. They prospered before COVID. They prospered in the dot-com of 2000. They prospered in the, the housing bubble. They'll process in the, uh, in the next recession. You know, it just, we don't need to worry about them. What we need to do as a country is stop targeting a few billionaires as though they're the problems with everything. Our problems is the government and our government are the people that we send because we think that we're sending them to do something that helps us. But what we're really doing is we're sending a bunch of morons over and over and over again that go in there, enrich their own pockets, and then come back, stir the pot of fire on you, let it out, and then turn off the water as they go back to Washington, D.C. It's time for, we, for us as a people to have a candidate that puts you first. And I don't mean like Trump, I'll make America great and that type of putting you first. I mean putting everybody in the country first equally in a manner that says, hey, we all have this level of taxation. Hey, we all have this level of progress that we wanna move forward. Okay, the majority wants this in this way. Let's make that process happen. And what we have is we have left and right going out on a limb with fringe ideas that have really no basis in ever turning into law. And thus what you have is you have a divided government that sits inactive while military warships float off the coast of Alaska, while certain governments in the Middle East that we protect thumb their noses at us while they rape us at the pump, right? And these are just the facts of what happens today. And so when you look at the other side and Donald Trump and why he continues to be the number one choice for the Republican Party is because sometimes in life, we all need to get on the same page. And for a little bit too long, it's been about America worrying about everybody else. And just for a moment or two, even if it's a moment or two, I think it's time for us as a country to worry about us. Let's worry about our seniors. Let's worry about real negotiations, not, not negotiations with Medicare that, that create a bill to make it look like you're helping seniors with medicine, knowing that that bill will be challenged. The Biden administration put forward a Medicare bill for drug negotiations that they knew would fail. They knew it would fail so they could make it a campaign issue. The reality is, is if they remove just some of the key components of the language of their negotiation on drug policy for Medicare, they would probably see passage and they would probably see a Supreme Court that would return the law back to its state and allow for the federal government to negotiate. The idea that the, the federal government can't negotiate for drugs is just ridiculous. It negotiates for everything. It negotiates for roads. It negotiates for military hardware. It negotiates for guns and submarines and airplanes. The federal government negotiates with everybody. But for some reason, it doesn't negotiate with medicine when it comes to Medicare recipients. 
and we had a good bill on the table. And when I mean we, I mean the Democratic Party had a good bill on the table and then they stuck some crappy butt low language in there that that doomed it, that made it so that it's not going to actually work and not actually going to help anybody. And so when you go to your medicine places to buy your prescription drugs and your prices and your co-payments are going up and up and up, just remember it was Joe Biden and the Democrats who put forward a deficient bill that they knew would get challenged and overturned. And that's just one more way that people who are, they claim to be aligned with you, are not in fact aligned with you. And just like last night, all those candidates, every single one of them, they all have acts that contributes to the system growing in power. They all have acts that have been authoritarian in nature. They all have acts that are just not good manners. And now eight of them are asking to go to DC so they can continue those same policies on you. And I disagree. And I don't think they should get to do that. And I don't think Joe Biden has the capacity to take them on one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe if he came out and he started going around campaigning with massive crowds and interacting with people. But it's a sad day when, you know, the leader of Russia uh, has more people out in public uh, when a heinous act has occurred that he's probably directed uh, than the President of the United States when he's going to, a new, to his next campaign event. We have to have this discussion or Donald Trump is the 47th president. Thank you again. Hope to see you next Tuesday. Hope I can get some folks with some questions. And I hope you guys all have a great weekend.